Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. I looked at alternatives to replace Google Search, Chrome, as well as Google Maps and Gmail. But there is one service where Google has put a lot of focus lately, especially towards businesses, and that's Google Docs. Let's take a look at alternatives. Google Docs Google Docs is perhaps the least problematic of Google's services. In fact, it might even be the least privacy invasive of Google's various offerings. It's also fast, easy to use, has nicely designed templates, it supports extensions, and its interface is coherent. Google Docs has great collaborative features and allows you to share your documents with anyone even without them being connected to a Google account, with simultaneous editing and a live preview of what everyone is doing on the document. Google Docs has a word processor, a spreadsheet, and a presentation module, and can import and export to regular Office documents or open document formats. The major concern on Google Docs stems from its terms of service, which indicate that everything you create might be modified, redistributed, and generally used by Google. Fortunately, there are alternatives to Google Docs. Let's look at a few of them. Zoho Docs I already looked at Zoho in my video on switching from Gmail. Zoho provides a complete office suite with a word processor, spreadsheet application, and presentation creator. They are called respectively Writer, Sheet, and Show. The first time you'll notice is that their interfaces don't look like each other. Rider has its own sidebar on the left with formatic options, Sheet looks like Google Sheet, and Show looks like its own thing with a sidebar on the right. This is not a big problem, but consistency is clearly not a priority here. Features-wise, all modules allow collaborative editing and document sharing, and support Microsoft Office formats as well as Open Document. Notably, Zoho Sheet supports VBA macros, and both the word processor and the spreadsheet module have some sort of assistant called Zia that can provide specific insights on the data you selected on your document. On spreadsheets, it creates automatic graphs and calculates a few numbers which you can then insert in your document. And on Writer, it allows you to spot spelling errors, grammar suggestions, as well as providing insights on what you're writing. Writer even gives you a complexity score to allow you to tailor what you're writing to a specific audience, although these features only work if you're writing in English. These are great additions, and I found myself looking at these tips more and more as I used these programs, trying to game them, and in the end relying on them to give quick information and tips. The Zoho Docs applications can also be accessed offline, and let you sync with documents you want to access without a connection. This is not as seamless as Google Docs though, since it requires you to enable offline access first. A free Zoho account will net you 5GB of storage for your documents, with syncing to the desktop, file versioning, two-factor authentication, collaboration features, Dropbox integration, and in-app chat. You can subscribe to a premium offer, ranging from 4 to 6.4 euros per month, with which you'll get 100 gigabytes or 1 terabyte of storage, along with other features mostly useful for companies. Zoho Docs shouldn't deprive you of any features you are used to on Google Docs. Sharing a document is one click away and they can be viewed and edited, but the big problem here is that you need a Zoho Docs account to edit or view say document unless the person sharing the document has ponied up for the premium offer. Every one of your documents can be synced to your desktop through Zoho Desktop Sync, an app available for Windows, Mac and Linux. If you don't care about the mishmash of different UIs between the different modules of the suite, Zoho Docs is a fantastic and full-featured alternative to Google Docs. The real downside is that people will need to create a Zoho Docs account in order to collaborate on your files. Microsoft Office Online The granddaddy of Office Suites has a web version. It is not as full-featured as the real Microsoft Office Suite, though. The suite is actually a little more complete than other competitors, including Google Docs, since you get Word, Excel, PowerPoint, as well as OneNote. Microsoft also adds access to Outlook.com and its calendar, Sway, Forms, Skype, and OneDrive. The applications are simple and light, with only the basics available online. Microsoft still has to sell its subscription to Office 365 and the full Office programs, so they intentionally limit what you can do here, but for most people, this should largely be enough. There are no features that I felt were missing from Office Online to allow me to do what I tried to. Microsoft Office Online doesn't have any offline access though, which is a bummer, compared to Google Docs, which can be accessed even without a connection. By default, a free Microsoft account will suffice to access these documents. You can share a document or a link to it, and anyone can edit it, even without a Microsoft account, which is better than Zoho's free implementation. Your document can be synced to your desktop through OneDrive, but that's not available natively on Linux, 
although some third-party clients are starting to work reliably and with a GUI. Office Online doesn't have a paid tier. As long as you pay, you get the full Office 365, but in installable format, so only compatible with Windows and Mac OS X. The web applications stay the same. Your online storage space is using a OneDrive storage, so your free account will give you 5GB, which can be extended, either by subscribing to Office 365 for $7 a month, which will give you a terabyte, or you can pay for just the storage and not for Office 365, in which case you can only get 50GB for $2 a month. If you're on Linux, you won't reap the benefits of OneDrive and Office 365, which don't work natively on Linux, so I'd refrain from poning up for a premium plan. Only Office. Only Office is an open source Office suite and can be used with a free online Only Office account. Only Office actually is the more full featured of the various alternatives listed here. Among other features, it supports more text formatting such as double strike through, all uppercase lowercase, editing auto shapes, editing charts directly in a document, using color palettes to quickly change the look of a document, or showing non printing characters. Only Office is compatible with most document formats out there, including older and newer Microsoft Office documents and the Open Document format. Only Office actually supports macros, but not VBA. Theirs are based on JavaScript, which might make them more accessible to users, but incompatible with the ones created on Microsoft Office. Only Office's interface will look familiar to anyone who has used a ribbon before, and is consistent between applications, unlike Zoho Docs. OnlyOffice also allows you to connect many cloud providers for online document storage, such as Nextcloud, Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, OneDrive or Yandex Disk. They do have a full-featured cloud office suite, but it's more tailored for companies, with access to the online office suite as well as email, a calendar, a project management tool, a community hub and even a CRM. This only nets you 8GB of storage though for the starter plan, so the offer is not that enticing if you only need to use the Office applications, since you'll have to use a separate cloud account to store more documents. The complete suite can be had for 60 euros a year for up to two users, and pricing goes up from that. If you're an individual, I'd recommend sticking to the free account and storing your files on a separate cloud account when your space runs out. Only Office made a great impression when I used it, with a coherent, nice-looking interface, its open source roots, and the fact that I can use any other cloud storage provider even through WebDAV. There is no offline editing solution though, since the downloadable editor only works with paid plans. After using these three editors for a while, I can say that my two favorites are Zoho Docs and OnlyOffice. Zoho apps have a modern interface, even though they don't look the same, their prices are pretty low for additional storage, it supports offline editing, although it's a bit more cumbersome than Google Docs, and Zia, the virtual assistant, is a nice touch, especially to preview data in a spreadsheet or to analyze what you've written. The fact that their syncing tool supports Linux is a nice plus. OnlyOffice, on the other hand, is open source, can be plugged in with any storage provider, including any that supports WebDAV, its interface is coherent and looks nice, and its collaboration features and compatibility are best in class. Prices are low if you want to access more features, and actually come with a full productivity suite, including email, calendar and project management, for less than an Office 365 subscription. Both have problems though. Zoho can't share documents with users that don't sign up for a Zoho Docs account, at least if you're using the free tier, and OnlyOffice doesn't support offline editing on its free plan. Microsoft Office Online, on the other hand, is just too limited in syncing options on Linux for me to consider it as a valid option. In the end, both solutions can meet my needs, but Zoho's document sharing is just too limiting. I don't see any of the people I collaborate with creating an account just to edit a document, whereas they would happily use only Office Online to edit the documents I shared. Offline editing is not really an issue for me for now, since I never edit documents on the go. The fact that I can sync my documents with pCloud, my favorite cloud provider, with only Office, is also fantastic. I might even pony up for the paid version and get my mailbox and calendar there. Do you use any other online editing suites? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching and goodbye. If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye.